Hello, and welcome back to the BotSpot. The invitation is a part of service I will close this series with, but that does not minimize its importance. Any service that ends without giving the opportunity for those who wish to be baptized or for any to come forward is doing those there a disservice. The sermons of the first century included invitations of sorts as well, starting with the very first one in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 39. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you, and to your children, and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Now, if the New Testament only had examples of apostles baptizing others, one could make the claim that only they were given the authority to do so, but that is not the case. The soon-to-be apostle Paul was baptized by Ananias, a man who was not an apostle, and this is found in Acts chapter 9, verses 17 and 18. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So important is baptism in the Bible that we see multiple other accounts of sermons, invitations, and baptisms as well, with another example being the Ethiopian eunuch. Now, as mentioned before, there's another aspect to invitations as well, the desiring a prayer from the brethren. James chapter 5 verses 13, and 6, 13 through 16 read, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is any cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the common prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And, if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now the main example here is of one in sin, but prayers on one's behalf when they come forward can be used in the previous examples as well. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, but how much more so are the prayers of a righteous congregation? Because of the chance that even one soul can be saved on any given night, the act of giving an invitation must never be neglected. Even in an invitation may not be answered immediately, perhaps by the continued hearing of them, one may make the decision to come forward. Or, maybe the invitation may be given in a different way than usual that convinces one to become a Christian or to come forward. This concludes our series on the parts of worship. We'll begin early next year in this series on the armor of God. Thank you very much for your attention.